Hi, Edith here from Collection Edit, and today I will present part one of the free motion quilting tutorial on the project Amsterdam on the Canal. The goal of this tutorial is to guide you, to show you what to quilt first, to ease you into this project and to build your confidence, to give you information that I found useful, and to make sure you won't be making the mistakes I made. I invite you to join my email list and to receive my newsletter. Just go to my website's homepage. Every month, I will let you have a peek at my new project and the ones in progress. And don't hesitate to subscribe to my free YouTube channel and click on the bell to be notified when a new tutorial becomes available. To assemble the top of a quilt or to quilt, I use either my Soprano or my Tiara from Baby Luck. To do the free motion quilting, I use the Super B embroidered threads 40 weights from monfield.ca and I like to use the fabrics from Northcott Fabric for all my projects. As for the appliques, I like to use the light steamer seam 2 and the warm white 8020 for batting by the warm company. To make the applique with the free motion quilting design, you will need a light box or a table with a glass top under which you can place a lamp. You will also need a mechanical chalk pencil and some light steamer seam too. If you've never worked with the steamer seam product, check out my tutorial on the subject and I've posted the link below. Here are some guidelines. Quilt twice on each line to give intensity to the free motion quilting. Whenever possible, travel on a quilted line to get to another applique. I will show you later. And don't be afraid to use contrasting thread colors. Your free motion quilting will pop and it will look amazing. Before you set the appliques on the background fabric, here's what you need to know. Some appliques should not be added to the background until way later. You will see what I mean in the second tutorial coming soon. But for now, know that the posts, the birds, the lamp posts and the lanterns the people and the large tree on each end should not be on the quilt. The following information is not relevant to this tutorial, but it's important to keep in mind that the bicycles and the railings on the bridge will be free motion quilted in the next tutorial. I decided that it would be easier to start with something that is fairly simple so that I can ease into the, this project without too much stress. So I started with the bottom half of the project and here's the order I thought would be best to start with. So first I did the bridge and then the sky under the arch of the bridge, uh, followed by the water and I finished by quilting the gondolas. Thank you. 
guys, I lost part of the video that was showing how I quilted the captains and I'm so sorry. All I can do is to show you pictures hoping it's clear enough that you can see what I did. With a white chalk, I traced the features on the applique. I started by quilting the console and the steering. Then I did the beard with a white thread, followed by the face, neck and hand with a flesh colored thread. And I finished with a dark blue thread to do the outline of the arm, the body and the toque or the hat. Here you see the captain of the other gondola. Now for the finishing touches. With a gold thread, I quilted a thick line that separates the sky from the water, but I only did it under the bridge. Next, using a dark blue thread, I quilted another thick line only where the wall of bricks meets the water. Finally, with a red thread, I quilted a thick line where the arch meet the sky under the bridge. This is it for part one of the tutorial. In part two, I will be quilting the top part between house three and house four. That means the sky, the trees, the guy on the bridge, the bicycles on the bridge. And if I can manage, I'll do the first house, which will be house number four. That's it for today. I hope you've enjoyed part one of this tutorial. Thank you for watching and I'll see you next time.